SpaceX is a company that just does not stop. They have been relentless with their innovation over the years and the pace that they are setting is only getting faster. There is a lot to talk about, too much in fact, so in today's video, we're dialing down on three more SpaceX projects, the Super Heavy Booster, the Autonomous Drone Ship, and the new Raptor Engine Factory coming soon to Texas. This is another SpaceX update. Before we get started, you guys know that we love talking about space and we know that you love learning about space. So we got a bit nuts and started a whole new channel dedicated entirely to space content. It's called The Space Race. We just published our first video and we'd love it if you would go check it out. There's a link down below in the description. Now let's get going. The SpaceX Super Heavy Booster is the company's latest creation and it is currently on prototype number three. This is the muscle that SpaceX needs to get their Starship rocket into orbit. The first version of the booster, BN1, was basically just a practice run for putting the vehicle together. Elon called it a production pathfinder and said they were figuring out how to build and transport a 70 meter tall stage. The building phase of the booster is mainly an exercise in stacking. The body of the rocket consists of 36 steel rings, basically the same ones that make up the body of the Starship prototype, but Super Heavy is a much taller beast, with Starship coming in at just around 50 meters high. BN2 was the first to undergo real-world testing, like cryoproofing where they fill the tank with liquid nitrogen to create a high-pressure situation that would simulate the stress of a space flight but no engine tests were done. That was reversed for the BN3. The latest booster was strapped with three Raptor engines and on July 19th, the Super Heavy roared to life for the first time under a static fire test. That basically just means that they strap the rocket down so it won't go anywhere and then they fire the engines for a few seconds to see what happens. If there's a flaw in the design, this is often where the whole thing will just explode. But BN3 did not blow up it passed the test with flying colors, and Elon is confident enough that he wants to try another test with the BN3 to fire nine Raptor engines at once. That would be the highest concentration of these engines that we've ever seen. The Starship prototypes have so far flown with three engines each, but that's still nothing compared to where we are going with this booster. The final version will someday propel a fully loaded Starship into orbit and will have around 30 Raptors on board. More on these engines coming later in the video. The current prototype is still not the one that will be going to space though. BN4 is under construction right now and that will be the booster that launches Starship SN20 into orbit this summer. Yeah, 420, you heard that right. This time I feel like it actually just has to be a coincidence. Elon is a troll, but he wouldn't scrap Booster 3 and build Booster 4 just to make a joke. Would he? Would he? It must be the universe giving us a sign. This flight is destined for greatness. SpaceX has officially taken delivery of a third autonomous spaceport drone ship, and watching the aerial footage of this thing cutting through the open water of the ocean honestly just gives me chills. This thing looks like it should be in a movie, not real life. This new addition to the SpaceX family of floating rocket landing pads is called a shortfall of gravitas. It joins siblings, of course, I still love you and just read the instructions. The upside of gravitas is that it is a true autonomous vehicle capable of navigating through the ocean without any support craft. The previous two landing barges need a bit of help from tugboats to get into position and then back again. The tugboats have fun names too. The main tug is called Finn Falgout, and he's sometimes supported by Hawk and Lauren Foss. Elon gives his drone ships crazy names in honor of the now dead author Ian M. Banks, who wrote the sci-fi novel series Culture from 1987 to 2012. In the fiction novels, the vehicles are sentient starships that feature artificial intelligence with a personality and are capable of selecting their own distinctive name. Clearly, Elon loves these books. The new version 3 drone ship has a much cleaner look than the previous models. You can see on the side of the first two drones, big piles of shipping containers. That's actually where the generators, power supplies, computers, and communication equipments are stored. Gravitas has a much more refined construction. 
The extra equipment required to turn a barge into a drone ship has been packaged in a far sturdier manner inside steel bunkers at the rear of the deck. Drone ship number three has also been equipped with an octograbber before it goes into service. The octograbber is a robot that lives in a blast proof garage on the deck of the ship. Once the rocket touches down, the robot is driven out underneath the booster. It uses four arms to then attach itself to the Falcon 9 octoweb, securing the whole booster for transit. So far, recovery teams have still needed to board the drone ship to perform other post landing tasks. But it's been thought that the extra autonomous feature of the new ship in conjunction with the grabber robot could eventually make for a recovery mission with no people involved. At the same time that SpaceX is pushing out their new drone ship, they are also hard at work on their sea-based landing platforms for the future Starship program. It was announced back in January that SpaceX had bought two old oil rigs and were transforming them into floating spaceports. Elon named the pair Phobos and Deimos after moons of the planet Mars. Phobos has seen the most work done so far. It's currently located in Pascagoula, Mississippi, that's northeast of Starbase on the Gulf Coast, close to New Orleans. When Phobos arrived in Mississippi, it was fully built out to handle offshore drilling, not spaceport operations. Almost all of the structure on the platform had to be removed, making up the bulk of the work done this year. What comes next for these former oil rigs is still pretty much unknown. SpaceX haven't released a design for what they intend these spaceports to look like or what exactly their function will be. We're still probably at least a year away from Starship launches moving away from Starbase and onto the floating rigs. So we'll just have to wait and see how they come together. Stay tuned for updates. Also, if you're enjoying this content, then please join us over at The Space Race, our all new sister channel. The Space Race lets us branch out from only talking about SpaceX and Elon Musk, and we're going to be covering a lot more ground in the world of space exploration. We've already had a ton of fun making the first video, and we've got some really cool ideas for you guys coming up. So please give it a watch and subscribe to the channel and let us know what you think. Elon Musk said recently that SpaceX has plans to build the most advanced rocket engine factory in the world in central Texas to support the growing needs of Starship and Super Heavy. And that means Raptors. More specifically, the Raptor version 2, which raises maximum thrust per engine to 230 tons. That's more than twice the power of the Merlin engine used in a Falcon 9 rocket. The other variant of the Raptor engine, the one designed to work in the vacuum of space, will be produced at the SpaceX facility in California. The Raptor burns a combination of liquid oxygen and liquid methane at an extremely high pressure to make a spectacular amount of thrust given its relatively small size. The Raptor is set to become the first methane burning rocket engine to make it into orbit. Methane is important because we're pretty sure there is a large supply of it available on the planet Mars, which could allow for Starship refueling on Mars using local resources. The other great advantage of the Raptor is its reusability factor. Obviously, none of the engines have been around long enough to really test this theory, but the intention is that each Raptor engine can launch 1,000 times in its lifespan, and that's nuts. The most reused engines in space exploration history were the main engines on each space shuttle, which flew only a few dozen times each. The Raptor's methane fuel prevents the buildup of deposits in the engine compared to other fuels like kerosene, a process known as coking which is bad and reduces the lifespan of the combustion chamber material. It's believed that this cleaner and more efficient operation due to liquid methane fuel should lead to more longevity from the engine components. According to Elon, the new and cutting edge SpaceX factory will be located at the company's McGregor Texas Rocket Development and Testing Facilities factory and ultimately mass produce between 800 and 1000 Raptor engines per year. Just for reference, McGregor is pretty far from Starbase. It's much further north between Austin and Dallas. As for why the engine factory wasn't built closer to the Starship testing facility at Starbase, we're not quite sure what happened there. All we have is a tweet from Elon that reads, the challenges of operating at Starbase left us with no choice but to put engine production in McGregor. The production volume of two to four engines per day is going to be critical for Elon to reach his goal 
of creating a self-sustaining city on Mars. SpaceX will need a fleet of starships numbering in the thousands to ever be able to send enough people and supplies to make it happen. With each booster and starship combo requiring about 42 Raptor engines, they've got a lot of work ahead of them. By the way, don't forget the space race. There's a link on the screen here somewhere. Subscribe to that channel. Check out the video and leave a comment letting us know what you think so far. And definitely subscribe to this channel if you're not already. Thumbs up this video if you liked it today and I'll see you in the next one.